Back in 2020, the M1 MacBook was the first of its kind, being Apple's first attempt at making its own silicone. This became one of their best-selling laptops for good reason. The performances chip allowed compared to other MacBooks was nothing like before. And in 2023, this is still true. I will be talking about the cheapest base model of the MacBook Air M1. Let's start with the most important thing about the M1 MacBook, the M1 chip. Now you can pull out benchmarks and all, but I'm going to talk about my real life experience. Anything that the MacBook was made for, the M1 just destroys. I had never had this clean and smooth experience on a laptop up below $1,000 with web browsing, emailing, and consuming content. Pretty much everyday productive things like school are just flawless. The chip is just leagues ahead of any Intel or AMD chips on optimized applications for even today's standard. Basic video editing is pretty good on this device, but if you're doing pro work, I would suggest getting 16 gigabytes of RAM or just buying a pro model. Now this is a different story on unoptimized things. Don't even think about gaming on this. Not only that most of my games aren't even able to be downloaded, the ones I can are just not the best experience at this price. If you're looking for for the best productive laptop under a thousand, just buy this. One of the best things about this laptop is the battery life. It is one of the best on the market, not just for this price point, but for laptops in general. It comes rated at 17 hours, but that's more like 14 hours of regular use. While most good Windows laptops come at like seven hours, if battery life is a concern, which I know for most people it is, then the MacBook M1 is just an easy choice. The Retina display that the M1 provides is still amazing even in today's standard. The colors are super nice and the sharpness is still amazing. It comes at 2000 560 pixels by 1600 pixels or 227 pixels per square inch and has a peak brightness of 400 nits. For the price, the display is one of the best on the market. The bezels at the top and bottom could be smaller, but that's not a big deal for me. Now features like higher refresh rate or higher peak brightness would be nice, but that's asking a lot for the price. The MacBook's design from before to now has been quite similar, with a thin wedge design. It is extremely thin and easy to carry around. The build just screams quality with no creaks and feels extremely solid while being thin. Overall, I think the MacBook design is a hit or miss, but I am absolutely in love with the design. The M1 MacBook comes fully fanless. Yes, no more airplane engine when you do anything remotely difficult. You might worry about the cooling, but for any test that was meant for the MacBook, I never found it overheating. The keyboard and trackpad that comes with the M1 is super premium. The keyboard feeling quite tactile, even for the short travel distance. It also comes with Touch ID at the top of the keyboard. The trackpad is big and has a silently thunky click sound. The physical aspects of the M1 MacBook are one of the best overall with experience. I'm going to address the reason why most people are on the fence about getting the MacBook M1, the software. macOS is either you love it or you hate it. As a person who has only used Windows their whole life, macOS is just fine. I've always thought that macOS is completely different from Windows, but really, it's not that insanely hard to figure out. They essentially have the same things, but moved around. macOS just has a simple presentation compared to Windows. Some annoying things like files not automatically arranging themselves, or not being able to snap open Windows in macOS, are things that I can look past. The only reason that I wouldn't use macOS OS is the amount of apps available. Most everyday apps that aren't available can be used through Rosetta 2, which runs pretty smoothly, but don't expect Steam to do the same thing. The speakers that come with the M1 MacBook sound full and have decent bass. It gets loud enough for any content consumption. The speakers have a very immersive feeling with the audio surrounding you. It's not going to replace any headphones for music, but sounds super good for laptop speakers. Let's talk about the bat. It only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and one is used for charging. So pretty much you only have one port when you are charging. Granted, you can get a dongle to get more ports, but I wish they just included more ports in general. The base model comes with only 256 gigabytes of storage, which is a little uncompetitive compared to 500 gigabytes on most base models. Bumping the storage to 500 gigabytes would cost you $200 extra. This also applies to the RAM. I would suggest getting more RAM rather than more storage if you want to upgrade anything when purchasing. Not only that RAM makes a performance difference, but it also is something that cannot be fixed in the future. You can always buy an external hard drive or extra storage for the laptop, but you cannot do this for RAM. For normal web browsing and school use, the base model would do you fine. But anything more pro like video editing, having more RAM and storage might be needed. So should you buy this laptop in 2023? If it wasn't clear enough, yes, absolutely. Outside of gaming, this laptop delivers you the best and fastest experience for productivity. If you're looking for a laptop for school or work for a great price, this is it. It comes with the best battery life in the market, a great display, amazing build and design, super fast speeds even for today's standard, and easy to use software. It comes in a thin design that is easy to carry around and can be found at $750 new. If you get used, you can even get it down to $600. And at that price, it's easily discerned competition double its price. The M2 MacBook Air is not really a performance boost and it's just a design change. And technically the M1 can even be better because you can upgrade the RAM and get extra accessories to level up your MacBook at the same price as the M2. If you've reached the end of this video, please help me out and like this video. That's pretty much it. Peace.